Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, first of all, to Universal Peace Federation for giving me the opportunity and inviting me here today. Um, it is my first time joining a conference uh, for Universal Peace Federation. And after today, I'm looking forward to becoming an active member. Yay! <laughs> thank you. Um, so we're speaking today about a very fundamental issue. Um, it's an issue that remains a critical concern in our society, violence against women. In the UK, the reality of gender-based violence continues to affect the lives of too many women, cutting across all ages, backgrounds, and communities. This violence takes many forms, including domestic violence, domestic abuse, sexual assault, stalking, harassment, and human tra trafficking. It is a violation of human rights and a fundamental barrier to equality. In recent years, we have seen alarming statistics. One in, one in four women in the UK will experience domestic abuse at some point in their lives. And one in five women have experienced some form of sexual violence since the age of 16. These numbers are more than just numbers. They represent real lives, families, and futures affected by trauma and fear. The rise of online abuse Coercive control and stalking has added new dimensions to this, challenging, to, to this challenge, making it all more important that we not only recognize the scope of violence, but also take action to stop it. The, um, looking at the legal perspective and protections that are available within the UK jurisdiction, the UK has made strides in addressing violence against women through legislative reforms and protective frameworks. The Domestic Abuse Act 2021 marked a significant step forward, broadening the definition of domestic abuse to include not only physical violence, but also emotional, coercive and controlling behaviours. We have laws such as Stalking Protection Act 2019, we have the Sexual Offences Act 2003, um, and also the Serious Crime Act 2015. Who, these acts are in place um, as part of pro providing protection, but the legal protection is just one part of the solution. These laws must be enforced effectively, and we must ensure that victims feel supported in coming forward. A strong legal framework means little if survivors are unable to actually access justice due to fear, intimidation, or lack of resources. The role of the justice system, um, if we look at it in the UK, has a vital role to play in protecting women and holding the perpetrators accountable. We have seen the, de uh, the development of specialist domestic violence courts, which ensure that these hearings uh, that these hearings are tr uh, taken um, by judges who are trained and sensitive to the unique dynamics of abuse. We have Clear's Law, which allows individuals to inquire about a partner's history of abuse, which is another tool to empower women with potentially life-saving information. However, gaps remain. Reports indicate that con conviction rates for sexual violence remain low, and many women still face significant hurdles in even accessing justice. We must work to improve the response of law enforcement and the courts, ensuring that they are equipped to handle these cases with the seriousness they deserve. Uh, ending violence against women requires more than just legislation. It demands a shift in societal attitudes. We must continue to raise awareness challenge harmful stereotypes, and promote education about healthy, respectful relationships from an early age. This fight requires collaboration from policymakers, educators, the criminal justice system, and each one of us. Support services such as domestic violence shelters, counseling, and hotlines are lifelines for those fle fleeing abusive situations. We must ensure these services are adequately funded and accessible to all women, no matter where they live or their background. So moving forward with the legal protections in place that are significant, they are not enough on their own. Our goal should be nothing short of a society where women can no longer fear violence, whether at home, at work, online, or even in public spaces. 
Violence against women is not inevitable, it is preventable. Together, we must continue to push for a justice system that listens to survivors, holds perpetrators accountable, and creates a safer, more equal future for everyone. In the UK, if we look at the legal services that are provided, there are numerous legal aid options and charitable organisations which are dedicated to supporting women suffering from domestic violence. These services provide critical, legal, emotional and practical support to help women escape abusive situations and re rebuild their lives. There's a Legal Aid, which is the main um, uh, organisation which provides legal support to women who have suffered domestic violence. Um, it offers access to legal advice, representation in court, and in support uh, and supports in areas such as family law, child protection, and securing restraining orders. To qualify for legal aid, victims, victims must provide evidence of domestic violence, such as police reports, court orders, or medical report. Some of the legal aid options also include, they provide services for non-molestation orders, occupation orders, and child arrangement orders. These are all in place for protection for women who have suffered domestic abuse. If we touch on some of the charities that are available in the UK, there's Women's Aid, there's Refugee, um, there's Rights of Women, which is a free organisation, and there's National Centre for Domestic Violence. In conclusion, legal aid and charitable support are crucial lifelines for women suffering from domestic violence. These organisations provide vital resources for legal protection, safe housing and emotional support, helping survivors take the necessary steps to escape abuse and start new lives free from violence. I'd like to end with a quote uh, that is close to me um, and it's just a message out for everyone. Uh, there are no limits to what we as women can accomplish. Thank you. Thank you.